Hello everyone, this is AK. In this week of video, I am going to explain the Spark architecture. Why I took this concept means Spark is one of the highly used data processing tool right now. Without Spark, we can't do any major big data processing and transformations. There are a lot of tools are there for big data manipulations. Some of them are like Hadoop, MapReduce. But due to the data evolution, we are forced to look different ways for data processing. Apache Spark is one of the popular data processing framework right now and people who are in data engineering and data science domain must know this framework while cracking the interviews. There will be a lot of questions could be asked from Apache Spark but one of the important question is Spark architecture. Apache Spark having its own architecture, there will be high chance of asking the explanations of Spark architecture questions in the interviews. And it is very important and basic parameter to understand the Spark concept. So before that if you want to receive good quality data videos from me, Press the subscribe button to get notified. Let's get started. In this video, we are only focusing on Spark architecture. But if you want to know the other big data tools like Hadoop and MapReduce, then comment it down. I will definitely make a new video of it. Okay. So let me start with the Spark ecosystem so that you can easily understand the Spark framework better. In the first block you are seeing here is a Spark services. Spark provides different services and features like Spark SQL, streaming data handling, machine learning support and graph computation. And if you are using Spark, you can use these services from Spark to handle the big data computations. And in the next set of blocks, we have the Spark APIs. So we already seen the Spark services and now you have to know how to communicate with those services. You can interact with Spark through different languages like Scala, Python, Java, R. So this is how the Spark ecosystem works. Let's move to its architecture. Apache Spark follows master and slave architecture. So look at the picture here. The master is the driver program which controls each and every worker node. And the worker nodes are the actual blocks which will do the work assigned by the driver program. Other than these two, we have the cluster manager which is used for allocation and managing the resources which are required to run the job. So this is the one line understanding about the Spark architecture but these things are not enough to understand its complete workflow. So let's see the workflow. The workflow begins from the driver program. When the Spark program is submitted, the driver program in the master node initializes the Spark context. The Spark context is something that will work with cluster manager. Spark context is used to represent the connection of Spark cluster and it will use it to create the RDD data structures. Once it is initiated, it converts the Spark program containing code transformations and actions into DAG. DAG is briefly called as Direct Acyclic Graph. It performs a sequence of computations on the data. So how exactly it works? Once the DAG gets created, it divides the data into RDD partitions for the executors. DAG is basically a graph structured layer. The nodes are the partitions of RDD and edges have the transformations. Once it happens, the driver program schedules which task will get executed on the worker nodes. So when the worker allocation is done by the driver program, the cluster manager assigns resources for the task execution. There are different type of cluster managers that are available for the Spark. Some of them like Apache Mesos, Kubernetes, Hadoop Yarn and, and Standalone Scheduler. The Standalone Scheduler is is the default one that comes with Spark installations. The main work of Scheduler is to assign the executors on the worker node. The executors keep a task memory on the RAM for the references or recollection purposes. The driver program have the control of the executors. So once the execution gets started, they have two jobs to do. The first job of executors to run the tasks which are assigned by the driver program and then it has to report those status to the driver program. These are the exact workflow of Apache Spark architecture. I think I explained correctly. If I miss anything or, ex or explained incorrectly, please comment it down so everyone can understand it better. Thanks for watching and thank you. See you on next week.